For today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to make one of the most popular mouse traps that I featured on my YouTube channel. This is called a spring trap, and it was first described in a book written by Muscal 428 years ago, so this is a really old design. It's pretty simple how it works. It has holes that the mouse enters. They want to get bait in the back, so they chew through a string holding down a spring, and the spring is attached to a noose. When they chew through that string, it goes up and you can catch them. And I've caught four mice in one night with this trap. The original description in the book had four holes. Now after posting that video, YouTube viewers made a 3D printed version. This is a single mouse trap here with one hole. It has that noose and a lever that goes up and down. Instead of being powered by a spring, it has a rubber band attached and it works really well. After featuring this trap, the same creator named Marcus from Sweden made one that looked more like the original with four holes but it still has that rubber band design and instead of wire nooses it has a plastic plate. This also worked incredibly well and we were able to get four mice in one night. If you have some basic woodworking tools you can make this trap and it's not that expensive. I use scrap material that I have around the farm and you can make this as small as you want with one hole or extend it out. I saw on eBay a version of this trap that's antique that had nine holes. That trap sold for several hundred dollars. I think it was around $400. But if you have a mouse problem, you could catch nine mice in one night. They'll go down the line. So let's go make this style mouse trap. The first thing you have to do is get your material. Here's the piece of wood I selected to make our spring mouse trap. It looks like it's gonna work. You can pretty much use whatever material you have on hand as long as it's wide enough. I just got this out of the scrap wood pile. Now I really like the antique version that could catch nine mice. So I drew a center line down one side and then equally spaced marks here. We're going to drill one inch holes at each mark. They're going to go about halfway through the board and you have a couple options for drill bits. My favorite is a Forstener bit on a drill press. It cuts really clean and flush. If you don't have these, you can also use a one inch spade bit on a cordless drill. I'll show you the difference now, so let's start drilling. This will work, but it's nothing compared to a Forstner bit. Let's go put this on the drill press and finish the job. Now that we have all our main holes drilled in our block of wood, we need to add some smaller holes to accommodate the noose and trigger system. For that, we're just gonna use a smaller drill bit the noose holes will go halfway down and you want them as wide as the main hole. The trigger system's a little farther back, they'll be closer together. That will accommodate the string and those will go all the way through the top and bottom. So I'll just drill those and show you what it looks like. We have all our noose holes drilled. Now we're just gonna do the trigger holes which are closer together and a little farther back. Our block of wood is almost complete. The last thing I need to do is drill a pilot hole on the back for the spring. I'll just flip it around. These are just gonna be directly across each hole. We're done drilling, now we're ready to bend some wire. The most common question I get from people interested in building this trap is they wanna know what wire to use for the engine. I try to stick with scrap material we have lying around the farm, extra pieces of wood, and small rolls of fencing wire. This has quite a bit of spring to it. It's fairly brittle, so if you bend it too much, it will break, and it works well for this trap. If you don't have fencing wire, a YouTube viewer named Emmett built this trap on his channel, and he said he went to Home Depot and purchased 1 8 inch steel cold rolled rod, so that's a good alternative. Now that we have our trap block complete, we need to cut the wire into 9 equal lengths just like this. Now we need to shape the wire by bending it. This is what it will look like. It will have two 90 degrees at the bottom, one here and one here, a big sweeping arch, and then at the front another 90 degree, and a hook for the snare. Now you can bend these with pliers, but it's kind of hard. I like to use a vise. I'll show you how I do that now. The first thing we need to do is bend the hook at the end. I like to cinch it down in the clamp. Once you have the hook started, you can finish it by squeezing it in the vise. Now I need to bend a 90 degree angle right here, so I'll cinch this down and give it a bend. 
The front's all complete, now we need to bend those 290s on the back. Now our wire's all shaped, I just need to make eight more. We're now ready to put the springs on the trap. You just take your block, turn it on the end, you'll see those nine pilot holes we started. We're gonna take that back 90, put it in the pilot hole, and hammer it down. One down, eight to go. We have our nine springs attached and they're really secure at the base, but they tend to move side to side. So what I'm gonna do is flip it around and add a staple at each spring. Our nine spring wires are now attached and really secure with that staple on the back. Now before I tie on the noose wire through these holes, I'm gonna kind of shape these so they come straight down and line up right on the front of this trap. That puts a pretty strong bend in there, and that's quite a bit of force for the mice to get caught. Those all look good. Now let's get the wire through these holes for the noose. Here's the thin wire I'm using for the noose. You just cut small pieces about this length, run them through the hole like I did here, and you want it so that that noose will fit flush on the edge of the hole and when it's pulled up. So now we can bend the spring wire down and attach these ends to the hook. That noose is now in place and attached to the spring. If you let it go, that will definitely work for mice. Let's just go down the line and complete the rest of them. The trap's now complete. The wire noose is attached to the spring and we're ready to set the trap. This trap can be pretty difficult to set. It takes quite a bit of time, but it works so well on mice. I think it's worth the effort. Now you have to get thread through those holes to tie down the spring. That's pretty much impossible without a long needle. The thread I like to use is the cotton thread on top of a feed bag. I just run it down through the holes like that, then come back around. We don't need that needle anymore. We're ready to hold this down and tie it off. This can be the tricky part by yourself. There we go, now I just need to go down the line, tie all those down, put bait in the back. Mice will come in, want to get that bait, and get caught. If you have any questions about how to build this trap, let me know in the comment section. You can make it as large or as small as you want. You can even have more than nine holes or as few as one. Now I have a feeling people are going to want to see this in action, see if we can get nine mice. So I'm going to do that in a future video, so stay tuned.